performed a combined analysis of DAP, HF and Deliver. And this enabled us to look at a couple of questions that we couldn't look at in each of the trials by themselves. So before the Deliver trial was locked and we had completed database lock, we pre-specified an analysis plan to combine the two individual trials so that we could look at a range of outcomes that neither trial was powered to look at individually. So they were cardiovascular death, total uh, all-cause death, heart failure hospitalizations, that's first and repeat or total heart failure hospitalizations, and cardiovascular death, myocardial infarction and stroke. And then the second reason we did this individual patient level pooled analysis was to look at the effect of dapagliflozin in the entire spectrum of patients uh, with heart failure and look at everyone regardless of the rejection fraction and see what the benefit was of the drug. So what did we find? Well, we found in our pooled population that there was a 14% relative risk reduction in cardiovascular death. We saw a 10% relative risk reduction in all-cause mortality and 29% reduction in recurrent or total heart failure hospitalizations and a 10% reduction in cardiovascular death, myocardial infarction and stroke. And importantly, we saw no evidence of attenuation or lack of effect at the high rejection fraction range. There had been previous analyses of empagliflozin suggesting that there may be a lack of benefit in those patients with high ejection fraction heart failure, but we saw no evidence of this for any of the outcomes that I've mentioned. No evidence for cardiovascular mortality, all-cause mortality, total heart failure hospitalizations, and cardiovascular death, myocardial infarction and stroke. The benefit of dapagliflozin was consistent across the ejection fraction spectrum. So for us, that means that there's a potentially important clinical message that all patients regardless of the rejection fraction, would benefit from dapagliflozin as their SGLT2 inhibitor for the treatment of heart failure. And it might even be that we consider using it before we know the ejection fraction, because many patients will wait for a time before they get a measure by echocardiography or cardiac MRI.